Whether you're buying or selling a house, or any real estate for that matter, here is your crash course on closing costs. And hopefully you're watching this video before you've signed the contract, because it's that document that dictates who pays what closing costs. In this video, I'm going to simplify closing costs for you. I'm also going to share with you how you can save money on some of them. In fact, this video could save you thousands of dollars on just one real estate transaction. And then I'm also going to share with you how you can calculate these yourself with a free closing cost calculator tool I have developed. I am Phil Pustiovsky, by the way, with FreedomMentor.com. I'm a full-time real estate investor, real estate mentor to many of the most successful real estate investors all across North America, best-selling author of two books, my first, How to Be a Real Estate Investor, which I give away for free in the top right corner. You can get your copy right now. Also, my newest book, Real Estate Investing Gone Bad. This is more for intermediates and experts shares with you what not to do when you're a real estate investor. And this is the number one YouTube channel for real estate investing worldwide, over 15 million views and growing exponentially. And that's because I share things you'll hear absolutely nowhere else. And for specifically this video, I also want to indicate how many transactions I've been a part of. Thousands and thousands all across North America over the past now on to two decades. I have been staring at closing statements for so many years. I have looked at these costs. I have, and in each case, these have been situations where I have some sort of financial interest. So I'm not just a closing company looking at it, but I actually have the you know, the uh, emotion of having to lose money or gain money from what those closing statements show. So I am as uniquely qualified to share this message with you as any human being alive. Here is your crash course on closing costs. The first one is going to be title insurance. This insures title for the buyer so that the buyer knows that they have a property free and clear of liens and encumbrances as well as no one being able to lay claim to the title of that property once they become the owner. Now title insurance is going to be specific per state but it's handled on a state level so what ends up happening is it's not like you can get a better deal or less of a deal depending on which insurance company you go through. Now let me give you an example where title insurance comes into play. This happened about a week ago with one of my apprentices picked up a great deal followed exactly what I taught him and he picked it up for $70,000. He's going to put about $30,000 in work into it including a new roof and some other things. So he's going to be in the deal at about $100,000 and then it should sell for about one seventy-five dollars conservatively. Those are real numbers. That's exactly how it works when you're working with the best. And so with that deal, he's got the potential of making almost seventy, uh, sixty-five thousand dollars $65,000. And so he gets a call, this was about a week after he closed, from an attorney representing the mother of the previous seller. And she says that that seller had signed over a quick claim deed to her, transferring property to her five years ago, and she never recorded the deed. But she's saying, hey, look, this is my property. It's technically been my property for five years, so you need to give the property back to me. What do you do in that situation? <coughs> title insurance. That's what it's designed for. So the title insurance company reached out to that attorney and said, look, Michigan State law provides that if, if a deed has been recorded, that supersedes any pocket deed that's not recorded. So hit the road, Jack. And that's exactly what happened. So the title insurance protected my student, so it protected his $65,000, $70,000 in profit. There you go. Title insurance, what's it cost? Well, in Florida, I'll give you those numbers. They, they charge $5.75 per thousand. And um, what that means to you and me is on the calculator that I've got, I just... Do a couple of zeros, five, seven, five. That's what you multiply the sales price by. Title insurance is based on sales price. So that ends up being, you know, a half, well, like a half a percent. Now, after a hundred thousand in the state of Florida, it goes to just five dollars per thousand. And you can actually Google to research exactly what that number is, and you can change the Excel spreadsheet on my closing cost calculator. Oh, by the way, here's a link to it. That closing cost calculator is a link to the video that explains how to use it. Okay, so title insurance ends up being kind of a bigger number. Half of 1% on a sales price of, let's say, $100,000, you know, that's still $500 on, on $200,000. That's still $1,000. It's kind of a significant closing cost. Who pays that closing cost? Well, in Florida, it is customary for the seller to pay it. 
But that really makes no sense. Almost no other state does that. Like Tennessee doesn't do that. California doesn't do that. Most states don't do that. Usually it's the buyer who pays for it. And it's because technically it benefits the buyer, right? It's their insurance. Shouldn't they pay for it? Yes. All right, but you know, as a, as a seller in Florida, of course, when I'm buying the property, it helps me, but when I'm selling it, I always have to pay. And uh, also what happens is in some cases, it's chosen by who chooses which title company. So if you're the one choosing the title company, if you choose you, you want to close with a certain title company, then the seller pays for it or, or vice versa. And also I'm going to tie into this uh, title insurance. I'm also going to tie in uh, the title search. So in order to be able to do uh, a title insurance policy, they have to do a title search to be able to see what's against title. So I'm kind of including that. And that's going to be an extra fee that might be another 200 bucks. Again, we have a closing cost calculator, but I'm just giving you a simplified version of what this stuff is so you know what it is. All right, so that's title insurance. Next thing we're going to talk about is, and this is not what it's called, but it's a deed recording tax. I'm doing it this way. I'm calling it this because that's the way it should be described. What you'll discover with closings is that people change the names around so they can get paid more money. And hands come out from all directions during the closing. It happens all the time. And so a deed recording tax is this. When the deed, which is what transfers the title, when that is recorded at the recorder's office, they're going to charge a tax based on the sales price. So this is again based on sales price just like title insurance. Now, in, uh, in my county, it's uh, $7 per thousand, or like I was saying, 0 .007, uh, if you want to do it in a calculator format. So this is solely based on what the deed shows. And, um, and in Florida, there's no way to tinker with this. Now, I told you I'd, I'd share with you how to save some money. Oh, real quick, to save money on title insurance, the only way to save money on it is if you just bought a property as an investor and you're reselling it maybe a, a year or two or three later, then what you can do is you can provide the previous title policy and then that basically becomes almost a credit or a discount, especially if you're the seller and you're having to pay for title insurance. So that's how you can reduce the cost by having a previous title policy in place and being able to provide that. And so if you're the one buying the property and you have to pay for title insurance, you still want to request that the seller provide you with their current title policy. Hopefully they can track it down on all their paperwork. All right, back to deed recording tax. So this is kind of tricky to get around. There's a couple of ways you can do it, and I, I wouldn't have time on this video. I share with my apprentices on how we actually close deals ourselves and uh, that don't include title insurance. And, um, and there's certain situations where that makes sense, but it's really for experts. And uh, what we do is we use like a quick claim deed uh, where we can transfer title and we don't have to pay the heavy duty deed recording tax. Um, but if you want to um, not necessarily save money, but something really cool, if you're in the state of Tennessee, uh, they have on the deed, it says at the top, it calls it consideration, and it says whatever the sales price is or the value, whichever is greater. Whichever is greater. So, if you're a house flipper, what you can do is if you bought a property for far less than value, you can put the value on the consideration on the recording of the deed. Now, you pay more in recording taxes, but here's the key. It would show that it looks like in public records you paid more for the property than you actually did. <laughs> Oh, would you hear that? So if you're a house flipper, that can be kind of sweet. So if you paid 70 for it, like we're using the example with Eric on that deal he just did, and uh, and you want it in, in, in real terms, he should have basically paid 130 for it if it had been on the market. So if the value is 130, if he if he's in Michigan, but if he was in Tennessee, he could have put 130 on the deed as consideration. He'd pay recording tax on that 130, even though he paid 70. So when he goes to sell it for 175 after he put, you know, 25, 30 thousand dollars worth of work into it, boom, it doesn't look like he's made any money. Now, some of y'all may not understand how powerful that is, but if you've ever been a house flipper, it's really nice when the new buyers don't know how much you paid or they think you paid a lot more than you did. All right, moving on. So the deed recording tax, who pays that? That is usually paid by the buyer, but in Florida, <laughs> it's customary for the seller to pay it. So I don't really know why that makes any sense, because who benefits from the recording of the deed? The buyer does. They're the one that gets the deed recorded. They're the ones that are transferring title to them. All right, how you doing on this crash course? We've got a long way to go. Hang in there. All right, next thing is going to be uh, property insurance. Uh, this is a closing cost, 
but it's something that basically is going to depend on whether you're, you're getting a, a standard policy because you're moving in and you're owner occupied or if it's a landlord policy if it's going to be a rental property or if you're doing a fix up maybe a light fix up it's a vacant policy or if it's a major rehab you'd be doing a builder's risk policy so this is going to depend this thing's all over the map depending on what it is that you want to do and who pays for that uh, the buyer pays for that because they're the ones that is paying for the property insurance. Now, some of you might be saying, well, this is all negotiable. Who pays for it? Well, sure. I mean, obviously, you can try to get the seller to pay all these expenses. And if you're an investor and you're buying it directly from a seller, they're going to want you to pay for all these things. Uh, but property insurance, by and large, the buyer's always paying for that because they're getting insurance on the property. Okay, we're moving right along. The next one I'm going to call a closing management Fees with an S. All right, fees. Now, this is going to be anything from what they call dot prep when they're preparing the closing documents to attorney fees. Some of you are in states or in countries where you have to have an attorney do the closing. And so they're going to charge fees to just do the closing. What does that mean? That means they're shuffling papers, they're handling some emails, people come into the office with the big oak desk and the nice pens, all that stuff. That's the, the managing of the closing fee. That can go anywhere, uh, each side can be like $500 on way up. I mean, and if you're in California, you have a closing company, a title company, and an escrow company. Now you got three people with their hands out asking for your money, right? So it can be a lot more in places like California. But I think in general, it's about $1,000 when you add both sides on up and it can be a lot more now um i know with with my closing company i have a great relationship with them they cut these fees way down because they make a lot of money when they get the title insurance policy that they sell so they get a piece of that number right there so um for my closing company that i work with a lot and that's how you can save money here you can save money by making sure that you have build a good relationship with a closing company and you might as well reach out to three or four different closing companies and ask for their closing schedule of fees ask what they are you might find a better deal out there especially if you're just a normal homeowner looking to buy or sell go go call around find out i mean there's there's different prices out there and if there's attorneys involved just expect to pay more because they got BMWs they got to pay for and, and the martinis they drink. So make sure if you got attorneys involved, expect to pay more. But if you're in a state where you can choose either a title company or attorney, no brainer, go with a title company because you'll save money. Um, oh yeah, saving money on property insurance, about all you can do there is, is and I have a great video on that subject, um, is to make sure you talk to several different uh, insurance brokers to find the best deal. All right. So next we're going to have real estate commissions. Uh, this right here is primarily um, paid for by the buyer, um, excuse me, by the, uh, by the seller. But, and here's the key but, you can save a lot of money here. You don't have to pay 6% as the seller. What we do a lot is a flat fee listing, which means that the 3% still goes to the the buyer's agent, the one representing the buyer. But but then as opposed to paying the other three to make it six, what we end up doing is usually paying only a couple of hundred dollars, like 300 bucks, and that's a flat fee. Now, the only way to pull that off is if you know something about real estate. And I got a great video on how to make sure you sell a house fast. It's called The Kiss of Death When Selling a House. It's up here. Um, real estate commissions uh, can be really expensive if you go all 6%. Now, some people look at the 3% and they say, well, Phil, if you find the buyer yourself, you don't have to pay the 3% to the buyer's agent. You cut them out. Now, here is my response to that. After over 15 years of testing this, I can say with an almost 100% level of certainty that in almost all cases, if you put a property on the market and you expose it to the entire potential buying pool, yes, you're going to have to pay 3% to the buyer's agent. True. But you will make more money because you had so many potential buyers looking at it, and especially if it's a multiple offer situation, they'll bid the price up. Paying the 3% to the buyer's agent is still a better deal. You net more than if you try to cut out agents on the buyer's side to try to find your own deals. I, look, we've tested all this, okay? It's just the way it works. It's the way the economics of this business works. So you're still not going to be able to cut out the 3%. You definitely can cut out the listing agent 3%. Most real estate agents that make a killing in life, they make all their money being listing agents because it's so easy once they get the listing. Now, the hard part's getting the listing, but once they get the listing, stick it on the MLS, 
have a low price, make it easy to show, voila, the buyer's agent sells it and they get their 3% for doing basically nothing. That's why we just want to pay the $300 to have the, um, the flat fee agent get it on the MLS and then you still pay the 3% of the buyer's agent. The buyer's agent still shows the property. A lot of people get concerned about that. <gasps> Phil, if I don't have a full agent listing uh, handling the, the deal, then, then who's going to show the property? The same people who always show the property, the buyer's agent, always. Okay. So um, that's that's paid for by the seller on the closing um, the closing statement. All right, moving right along, we have this other thing called prorations. Prorations. These are things like the taxes that have been accruing throughout the year, but usually you pay your property uh, taxes at the end of the year. And so, as a seller, you're going to be paying. You're going to be kind of prorating those taxes. That, uh, that you haven't paid yet that, that are going to be paid. And in some cases, you do pay the taxes. Let's say you pay them in November, and then someone buys it in December. Well, then there's, there's going to be the opposite proration where the buyer ends up prorating back to you. Okay, so because you paid for some taxes through the end of the year, and you didn't even live in it through the end of the year. Another example of proration besides tax could be like if you've got a furnace and there's oil in there, uh, or if there's a propane tank and there's some propane gas in there, they may prorate those items because there might be a certain number of gallons in there, and you as the buyer are going to pay those in those instances. You're going to be paying for the oil or gas that might be in those tanks that you are basically getting as a part of the purchase. Unless, of course, you stick it in the contract that, you're, uh, that the, the seller um, is giving those to you for free. All right, that's just another little detail inside of the contract. All right, now everything we've covered here, this is going to be the same on whether or not you get a loan or not on a property. If you're getting a loan, and I know it's at the very bottom of your screen, I'm going to put it right here. Okay, loan fees. Yeah, this is a whole video in and of itself. But if you're getting a loan on a property, you have just introduced yourself to a whole slew of new costs with different names that they can really stick it to you. All right, now here's, how, um, here's what they can be called. Underwriting fee, origination fee, processing fee, flood cert fee, 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 fee. They're all over the map. And also, if you're getting a loan, there's going to be a new recording tax, not deed, but mortgage or deed of trust, what they call a security instrument recording tax. Loan fees. Now, these right here, if you're getting a loan, the lender um, that is providing you with the potential for getting a loan, they're the ones that need to give you an outline of those fees. They call it a truth and lending statement, and they break down what these loan fees are. So you can see those. How do you save money on loan fees? You shop around. If you talk to three different lenders and you tell them you're shopping them, uh, they will give you the best deals on these fees. Now, at some point, no matter how good your credit is, no matter how much money you have in the bank, no matter how good your relationship is with a bank, there's still going to be some sort of fees that are attached to you getting that loan. But at least they can be a lot lower. If you are a novice and you have bad credit, oh man, they can just rape and pillage you on loan fees. I have seen it. I have been a mortgage broker. Whew, it gets ugly out there. So... When in doubt, always get several opinions on loan fees. And that's how you can potentially break those down. Now, the seller might agree in the contract to pay 3% towards all these things. But really, it's, it, ultimately, it's the that is your crash course on closing costs. All kinds of fun, isn't it? If you want to know what the closing costs are going to be on your deal, uh, just click up here to get access to my closing cost calculator. It's an Excel file, and uh, you can edit it and adjust it. And that actually takes you to a video to show you how to use it. So, um, But now you have the intellectual side of what all these things mean and, uh, and how they all interact with the closing. And then also you can now put together what that amount's going to be. Hopefully you learned a couple things on how you can save some money on a few of these. And uh, yeah, that's what happens when you look at thousands and thousands and thousands of these transactions you look at where these things all come from and you understand how in some ways to save but how in some reasons you know who pays what and why they pay it all right thanks so much for watching if you want to learn more about how to be a first class market leading real estate investor check out my apprentice program where my team and i work with people step by step hand in hand to turn them into money making machines also if you haven't already grab a copy of my free book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, you can definitely put those down below here. I try to carve out time out of my schedule to answer those. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.